Hi everyone, it's Sarah from Funky Fossil here and I wanted to uh, share a short um, video with you in terms of how to make uh, a really bright and bold card uh, with some of our new products. Um, it includes our artsy stamp set. Let me just get these into shot for you. Our artsy stamp set, um, which has been designed by Anne Corbier Scott uh, and it's full of really kind of fun doodly um, art and, uh, and kind of crafting images, paint brushes and paint tubes and a, and a palette. Um, alongside some stenciling, which um, I do on most of my projects. And I'm gonna use two stencils today. I'm gonna use our Make Art stencil, which hopefully you can see there. It's got lots of, um, lots of words um, cut into the uh, design. So you've got a great background there. And also we'll use another word stencil as our um, focal point, which is our arty words. And these are similar words, but uh, in a real kind of bold um, size and style. They're great for uh, art journaling and mixed media projects as well as card making. So they're the products I'm gonna to use today. Alongside our new brushes, our new blending brushes, uh, which just fab and really lovely to use. So I'll show you a little, little bit uh, with those on this card as well. And this card um, could just as easily be a journal page um, if you're wanting to um, put something into your art journal. I've made it a large card front here, um, but uh, I'm sure you'll see the potential for using these in your journals as well, uh, particularly with the kind of themes and images we've got. So we've got lots to get through and uh, let me make a, a start. Lovely bright colours today, nice fresh zingy colours. Um, so we're going to use um, our Distress Oxides to create a blended background. This is on the card base itself. And we'll use some picked raspberry to start with. I'm going to go straight in with, uh, with the brush. Uh, I'm using one of the smaller brushes. They come in four different sizes. Um, when creating backgrounds, it doesn't really matter what size of uh, brush you use. Of course, the larger the brush head, then the, um, the, the, the more coverage you'll get more quickly. And the, the really lovely thing about these blending brushes um, is the kind of the ease with which you get a really nice soft blend on your card. In fact, let me show you here. This is um, going to be the centre of the card, which is going to be covered up. But I can go straight into the centre of my card and not worry uh, about getting kind of uh, straight lines or um, kind of um, harsh edges with the blend because the brush is just so soft and gives you that really lovely airbrushed effect very quickly and easily. Now I'm not going to cover this whole card base because as you saw uh, originally um, the middle is going to be covered up so I don't need to worry too much about covering every every bit uh, of this card front and the brushes let me just get that colour in really quickly and easily and a nice smooth application of colour. You can get it as, as um, strong and deep as you want depending on uh, the look that you're going for. So I'm adding just some bits of the picked raspberry very randomly around the edges of the card. Before we go in and um, we'll add some peacock feathers and you'll see from this brush I mean I'm using it predominantly for blues but I don't I don't think the last blue I had on it was peacock feathers and it really doesn't matter um, you're not going to get contamination you still get that nice true color coming through I wouldn't have suggested going in with the blue into the pink br uh, ink pad because you might create a different blend by doing that. But if you if you keep brushes broadly within a colour family, you don't need to worry too much about cleaning them between uh, between colours and applications. So you see, I'm still working the edges of this card and getting those colours in. And this bigger brush head you saw there um, obviously both held more ink and also gave coverage more quickly. So larger brush heads can be a quicker and easier way to cover the larger spaces. Finally, let's get some twisted citron, my zingy, lemony yellow. I'm just filling in the spaces that we've got left here and creating some overlap so we get some nice unexpected colours coming through along our border. 
I have broadly worked in threes. You can see the three pinks and the three blues, uh, ignoring that middle bit where I was just showing you blending in the centre. So we've got some nice coverage around the edge of our card. And to add some uh, interest to this background, I'm going to use our um, Make Art stencil. And I'm going to add a bit of extra dimension here. I'm going to use some of the Crafters Workshop stencil butters, uh, which I know you've had on the craft store uh, recently. I'm, I'm sure Leonie's had them on, so um, they may still be uh, available in the store. But I'm, I'm using these particularly because they've got um, perfect colours to go with those Distress Oxides that we've used. And again, I'm working around the edge of this card. The middle won't be seen. Uh, and I'm not looking for even or full coverage. I'm just wanting to get some words uh, showing in the background uh, in a slightly random way. So let's just go in with some of the tone on tone, um, some fuchsia pink going over the, the pink part of the uh, blending, letting it go into the peacock feathers too. So let's see what we've got there. So that would give some lovely dimension and bright colour. Let's put a bit of pink on here as well, where we've also got some pink in this edge while it's on the on the stencil. So I'm not going to add too much more to my palette knife. And I'm not worried about all of the words being uh, legible or visible. It's, it's about creating that interest and texture in the background. And of course this bit here where it's gone over the edge of the stencil won't be seen because of the um, uh, focal point we're going to put over the top. So let me wipe off the um, palette knife and go in with some of the greeny colour here which is the chartreuse from the crafters workshop. I do love the colours and the consistency of this stencil butter. So again, small amount. I'm just picking up the area where the, the green ink is. And lifting that. And we'll get a little bit of the blue in the top corner. Top corner? Yeah, let's go with the top corner. And I'll just wipe that off again before I go in with the turquoise stencil butter. You could go um, over this stencil again with the, with the remnants of these butters on them and get a fab blend as well, a lovely multicoloured um, bit of stenciling. And they do, they do come together really lovely like that. So there we go. In fact, I'm going to put a little bit more just at this bottom edge. I'm just going to use a bit of the stencil that I haven't used already. Hopefully I've still got that on camera. Great. So we've got most of the um, edge covered there, but not all of it, and that's that's absolutely fine. It's just about adding more colour and depth to the background. Let me just tidy this up, and we'll move this to one side while the stencil butter is drying, and then we'll come back and do the focal point. Okay, we'll move on to the focal, po the focal point, the focal panel for the card front. And I'm going to use another stencil that I forgot to mention at the beginning. Um, it's our drips and splats stencil. It's lots of fun to use. And um, you can use the, the kind of the uneven border to, to create kind of a dripping paint effect. And you've got these four different size splats as well. Um, so yeah, lovely, great. They go great with the um, the artsy stamps and the um, the word stencils that we've been working with already. And what I'm going to do on this card, for, uh, the card front on the panel, is again use our stencil brushes with the same colours we've been working with and just add some splats. So these are obviously kind of splats that it's quite difficult to get just with your paintbrush there. They're kind of big cartoony splats almost. So I'm just going to work into the centre of each of the splats with the brush. There we 
go to the splat number one. So the different sizes and we'll go with those that same kind of green, blue and pink that we were using on the um, card base. So it all ties together. And when, you, when you're making kind of bright, colourful um, creations, um, it is best to kind of work with the same three or four colours throughout, otherwise it can get a bit much for your eye to be able to, to follow. Let's put some a smaller pink splat next to this. And you'll see as well that I'm stenciling uh, or letting the stencil uh, design kind of move off the edge of the the card stock. So again, it doesn't all look like it's being contained within within that card panel. It just gives it a slightly more natural and random look. So I picked raspberry. Now before I um, go in with a different colour, I'm just going to wipe away this ink. Just with a bit of dry kitchen towel, it just stops the um, that different colour being pulled in and sometimes you get kind of quite muddy tones. And I'm pulling the kitchen towel towards the centre of the stencil because you'll see with these splats um, if you move backwards and forwards too vigorously you in danger of, um, of kind of um, catching some of these finer details so it's best to work into the stencil aperture so let's put some more picked raspberry but on this different splat here see we've got, still got a bit of blue there it doesn't need to be completely clean you just want to take any ink that's sitting on the top there out. One of the things I really like about using stencil brushes is they are much more forgiving. So when you are working with a stencil like this, which has those um, kind of slightly loose details around the edge of the splat, it is less likely to um, catch them and pick up um, kind of bend the bend the stencil because the bristles are so fine and soft um, it is really very forgiving in that respect this is another reason why I like working with them with my stencils let's have a blue splat in the bottom here and then we'll just add one more I think you'll move the card slightly there or add to the splatty effect, won't it? Try and stay in, obviously, so I don't get any of the uh, straight stencil lines. Oh, I'm missing. I need another green. I feel it's lacking a green. Let's put a little one here. And I'd be happy to add splats all day. Just has a really nice kind of bright cartoony look. Okay, so that's enough splatting on the front of our cards. And what I'm going to do now is put the main um, focal point, the words, the, the, the um, big words from our arty word stencil over the top. Now you've got choices here, as always with everything. You could use black texture paste, you could use um, black ink, um, I'm going to use some black acrylic paint and um, dab it through with a sponge because I like the um, the opacity that gives me. It gives me a really sharp, solid black. And let me show you what I mean. So on the, um, the original card that I was using as my inspiration, I used uh, black ink. And it's, it's great, but it, it isn't as intense as I'd like. So let's see if we get a stronger effect with some black paint. And I'm using a cosmetic sponge here, just scrunching it up in um, my hand and then picking a little bit of the paint up and dabbing off. When you're going through a stencil with paint, you don't really don't want um, to have too much on your sponge so you don't get bleed through. The, um, the design and some acrylic paints are more um, 
liquid, more fluid than others. This is a deco art one, I think, which is a nice, has a nice body to it for um, stenciling with. Now I'm going to carry on sponging through the stencil just as you're seeing me do here. And then I will come back to you for the reveal to see how the words are looking. Okay, so I've finished uh, sponging the black paint through the stencil to create the words on the front of our card. Um, and you can see how strong and intense that black is compared to the inked version. So again, it's a matter of preference, but it's a slightly different look with the paint. And I quite like the kind of um, graffiti style look of the stencil letters with the, with the black paint. So just a few finishing de details now to uh, to um, finish the design. One thing I like to do um, is go round these splats with a black micron pen because I think it just adds to that cartoony feel of the splats and gives them some definition um, with the uh, with the black light with the black words in front of them. So I'm not going to do all of this on camera because um, it'd be a bit boring for you to watch. But I'll just go around one little splat here and uh, you'll get you'll get the idea. So when we're doodling around these uh, splats, I'm going freehand and I'm really deliberately trying to make the line as loose and uneven as possible. So I'm not going for a perfect coverage, a, a perfect outline on the splat. And then I just go around again, second time, trying to have those lines cross over a little bit just to give a sketchy look and just give some definition and it'll pull those splats back out um, uh, against the wording and I'll go around and do that on um, most of the visible bits of the splats that we've got there in the design. What I then do is add some um, splatter with them um, some sprays. I'm using um, Purdy Winks Colour Pops, and here I'm not going to use uh, the spray itself, but I'm just going to use a smallish paintbrush in the in the in the um, bottle itself. I've already given these a shake, and just splatter over the design, just adding to that messy, fun look. And I'll add some of the um, aquamar aquamarine from the uh, same range. You can see I'm still using all products that have a, a kind of tie together with the with the main colour scheme for the card. I'm just rinse my brush off with a bit of water, and we'll. Add a bit of that splatter. And the nice thing with um, the words being acrylic paint is, oops, I don't know why I put that back in there. With the words being acrylic paint, then they're not going to move with whatever you put on top of them. Now, once that splatter has dried, what I then would do is add um, the paintbrush from the uh, Artsy stamp set which is really kind of the inspiration behind this whole card. These are a good size uh, of image. So I've just stamped this out, um, colored as you can see, and then cut it out with this with the thin white border. And what I'll be doing is just placing it on my card front um, with the with the pink of the, um, the paintbrush um, over the pink splatter. So it looks almost as if it's it's created that splat. And while all this is still a little bit wet, I'm just going to place it over the card base that we made at the beginning with the um, stencil butters and the brushes creating that blended background. And hopefully you can see what a bright and fun card that is or a journal page if that's where you'd prefer to uh, work. So I'll finish off, do my doodling and um, let these splatters dry and uh, there'll be a finished card for you to see at the end. 
but thank you very much for watching i hope you've enjoyed seeing how these stencils can work with paints and inks and pastes um, and how you can bring a bright colorful look to um, your artsy designs thanks again see you soon bye